So hi guys, welcome back to Code Explorer. Here I am Pavitra Banerjee with you, and you are watching this video as a part of our new playlist, PSF uh, Full Code. Here in this video, we are going to talk about uh, introduction about data structures and algorithm, and we will uh, talk about about the code first, and then we will move to our introduction part. Okay, so let's start the introduction part. So basically, uh, this uh, total playlist is going to be a data structure and algorithm complete course for you, totally free of cost, available on YouTube. And uh, in this video, uh, in this playlist, I am going to share you the uh, handwritten notes by mine, and then I will share you the source code which I will write here. Okay, and the prerequisites for this course will be. Uh, basically two languages I will prefer one is C and one is C++ so the major part I will cover in C and some basic syntax of C++ will become here and uh, as I have already started a playlist to teach you uh, C programming language from beginner friendly level to an advanced level so if you have not any idea about C programming language then you can also follow the playlist uh, there I will update new videos soon so you can definitely check that there you will learn uh, the basically our uh, C programming language from scratch to an advanced level okay and I have already told there that I will make you a job ready C developer and that is basically data structure and you have to learn data structure and algorithm so I am just starting this okay and this video is going to be totally placement preparation so I will uh, teach you and I will guide you the whole data structure and algorithm basically uh, you learn to need to work in product based companies like Google Microsoft uh, that type of uh, companies okay so uh, I have one more question I have to want to clarify that is the why I am not using advanced programming language uh, basically like Python, JavaScript. So the uh, answer is uh, that data structure and algorithm, uh, you have to learn the basics. And C is a basically bare bone language. So you have to do all the things uh, by your own in C programming language. I have already told you that the, and the video. If you have not seen that, so please go check it out. So basically C is a bare bone programming language and here you have to solve all the problems by your own you have to handle the memory allocation for everything so it is why the C and C++ are the best programming language to learn data structures and algorithm and if you are a uh, beginner so you have to definitely uh, learn C and C++ to learn DSA and uh, if you are an advanced level programmer, then you can choose Python, JavaScript, uh, this type of language to learn DSA. Uh, and one more thing I want to say uh, that in this video, I will guide you and I will say all the things I will I have already mentioned you. But you have to make a commitment that you will follow the whole thing and you will not skip a single step. Otherwise, you will not able to understand okay because data structures and algorithms are not so difficult but are difficult okay so you have to keep in mind this so let's start the video so today we are going to learn about data structures and algorithms so uh, i am going to type here so data structures and algorithm okay so basically what is data structure and algorithms so data structure is a way to arrange data in our main memory for efficient usage okay this is the basic uh, definition of our data structure that is data structure is an uh, way to arrange our data in main memory for efficient usage How, uh, here our main memory is basically our ram 
our systems RAM uh, that is uh, as you know random access memory okay so uh, we have some examples about the data structures algorithm uh, sorry basically data structure so uh, I think you already use uh, the something some type of data structure basically like array we have we have linked list we have uh, binary tree we have graph basically these are the structures of our data okay so uh, data structure uh, basically let's suppose array then linked list then we have uh, tree we have graphs basically these are our uh, data structure so in this tutorial series we will learn this type of all data structure we have and uh, now you have uh, algorithm so what is algorithm so algorithm is nothing but uh, sequence of steps uh, we use to solve any problem okay so what is data structure and what is algorithm first you have to need to clarify this basically data structure is the way to arrange data in main memory for efficient usage okay and algorithms are the nothing but a sequence of steps to uh, solve a problem okay so let's suppose uh, uh, you are feeling sleepy and you want to uh, take a coffee okay so what will you do so basically first you will take a can uh, then there you will give water then you will add uh, coffee powder there then you will add uh, so if you want uh, sweet coffee then you can add sugar there otherwise you, you don't want to add sugar there so that is basically our steps we are following to for which problem we have the problem that we are sleepy and we want to uh, uh, that we want the, that we don't sleep so it is why we want to take coffee for this problem you have to make this solution but when you are talking to a computer when you are talking with a computer computer will not understand this language that uh, take uh, a can add water add sugar add coffee powder computer will not understand that so computer will understand that's own thing that we are, so we have to talk with our computer by the language what they can understand so they can understand programming language like C, C++, Java, JavaScript, Python. We have a various types of programming language. Basically, in today's world, we have uh, approximately 700 plus programming languages now. So, but C is one of the most uh, oldest programming language, but one of the most powerful programming language. So we have chosen this uh, for our this course. So. I think now you have got the under, uh, you have understood that what the data structures and what the algorithm. Data structure is the uh, way to uh, uh, store the data for an efficient usage, and algorithms is nothing but sequence to solve a problem. Okay, and I think that you have already know some programming language. Let's maybe Python, Java, C, whatever you know. E. Uh, there you have used array. So as you can see that I have written here uh, that we have array. You can see that we have array. Array is a data structure. So I think you know how to uh, what is data structures. You don't know what is data structure, but you have already used a data structure. And uh, I think you have already solved in some problems that you have. I think you have already uh, added two numbers. I think you have already. Uh, added to arrays if you have done in programming language then the steps you have followed that is algorithm so I, you have already written algorithm too okay so now what we have to do data structure on the concept of data structure and algorithm are nothing but we have to play with our data in an efficient way with the minimum uh, memory usage and uh, with the maximum um, efficient way okay so let's suppose uh, that we are using google chrome browser today so what if let's suppose that google chrome browser is written 
uh, in Python and C++ and C. So, what is that uh, the Google Chrome browser takes too much time to load anything? First of all, I want to tell you that how Google Chrome basically works. When you hit the icon of Google Chrome in your laptop or PC, at that time, Google Chrome, dot, that is, which is chrome.exe file, basically load to your RAM. Okay. So your RAM may be for 2 GB to 32 GB today we have. So that's maybe. But your Chrome browser first will load to your RAM. That is your random access memory, which we will talk about main memory for now. Okay. So when the Chrome browser.exe file will load there, at that time what will happen? At that time, uh, you can uh, uh, start your own task. But what if that Chrome.exe files takes too much time to load? At that time, Google Chrome browser have too much uh, competitors like Microsoft Edge, uh, Firefox, Mozilla, various types of competitors they have and they will tell that come to our browser, our browser is fast. So Google Chrome browser developers have to keep in mind that they have to play with these data structures and they have to write efficient algorithms which will uh, take minimum space, which will take minimum uh, uh, time to execute. Okay, so it is why we have to learn about data systems algorithm to go to our any product based companies like Google, Amazon, Microsoft. Okay, so now one thing I want to tell you that what is uh, but what is database? Okay, now I want to write. So database is not um, uh, required to learn data structure algorithm. But uh, when you are learning about data structure algorithm, that means you are preparing for any interview. You are preparing for job. But there you have to. The company may be ask you may ask you that what is database then what will you say they can ask you this type of questions also so database is nothing but a collection of information in permanent storage for faster retrieval updation and deletion okay you don't need to write this uh, from scratch to your notebook right now i will share the pdf notes with you which i have already made for you guys okay so let me show you that what they are so i have already made this for you so as you can see that i have made this pdf for you guys so you can uh, and i will share this pdf link with you in the description box so you can definitely check this okay so uh, database what i am saying about that database is a collection of uh, information in permanent storage okay and for faster retrieval updates and deletion here we have some types of data databases right like sql sql uh, one is MongoDB, one is NoSQL, one is uh, today we have Google Firefox, we can use that also. Uh, okay, so now I want to move to our next topic that what is data warehousing? Okay, so what if that uh, today I am giving you that a few very large data at that time, uh, the management of huge data. Uh, basically a huge amount of data which is legacy data for better analysis we use the data warehousing system so what is basically our uh, um, legacy data so legacy data is nothing legacy data is our old data which we have used previous so let's suppose uh, uh, you are using uh, facebook right so facebook instagram so what they are doing they are uh, let's suppose that your uh, friend has uh, some of your friends has uh, with you in your birthday uh, on Facebook. Okay, so how Facebook can remind that Facebook will not directly store that data to your main memory, but when you should uh, want to analyze that data, you can access them. So that means we don't want to keep them in our main memory because. Uh, a huge amount of data 
in our main memory will can uh, violate our uh, which will increase our space complexity which will increase our time complexity also so at that time what will you do at that time we will simply uh, erase the legacy data which is our old data from the main memory and we will store it something where else okay this is basically our uh, legacy data and uh, we have to use the legacy data for we use the legacy data for analysis purpose basically okay so as you know that uh, today data is the most precious thing in today's world so we don't want to lose any data and basically today uh, when we are using chat gpt these types of ai basically artificial intelligence are the main source of their uh, that is data so today we don't want to lose any data okay so this is why we just simply remove the data uh, the old data from our main memory and we store it some somewhere else okay so this is our legacy data now what is big data so uh, one thing i want to say that analysis of two larger or complex data which cannot be dealt with traditional and uh, traditional data processing applications are known as big data okay so you don't need to write this right now i have already told you i will provide the link a uh, pdf link with you in the description box so you can simply check it out okay now i want to show you that how our um, memory layout of c program basically works so let me uh, draw a picture for you okay so i am drawing a picture right now okay so let's suppose this is our ram so what will i do i will simply write ram here i am using the highlighter to write okay not a big deal here. okay so this is our ram let's suppose this is our ram so how our c program basically work so when we write c program so we have to use the memory allocation by our own okay so this is why i am uh, I am using C and C++ to teach you this video I teach you this data structure algorithm because here you have to do all the things by your own and this will basically clear your basics your fundamental will be uh, very strong which is why I am using C okay so first thing what happens there first thing let's suppose I have another I will draw another line here okay and i want to give it a name here which is let's suppose code loading so okay now this is perfect this is let's suppose code loading okay so what is code loading code loading is nothing but when our code is being loaded in our ram okay when you hit the let's suppose you are hitting the chrome application that means at the time the chrome.exe file uh, has been loaded to our ram this is our code load and now i want to move to the next step which is uh that is um, static and global variables static and global variables okay this is our next step which is static and global variable so in this video we will not discuss this today because uh, basically the static and global variables are nothing but that is uh, initialized and uninitialized data okay so we will talk this when we will 
learning fee in our that playlist so you can check that there now what will you do i want to create two more lines we have two more steps here in our memory that is that is nothing that is the most important thing you have to learn about so that is uh, one is stack one is stack and one i have heap so one is stack and one in heap so what is this right now what is stack and what is heap so uh, let me show you that what is going on here um, so when i will go to my desktop at the time i have an c program c length okay this is my c length uh, folder i have already created this and here i have the uh, i am opening this with my visual studio code okay and i will simply close this for now and i will also close this also so as you know that you can see that i have uh, my c a one c code which is left from stack.c i have built this file already so what is happening here so as you can as you know that when our c code basically compiles at that time our main function is called fast okay so what will i do i want to bring this i want to bring this here and then i want this this i don't want this this type thing so what we have so let me sorry sorry guys what is this so i will simply take them here okay so now you can see that as you know that basically when our c compiles c code compiles at that time first uh, at that time first what happens first the main function has been called okay so when the main function will be called at that time here you can see that we have an funs2 so that is another function where is the funs2 uh, func so func2 is declaring here. we have declared this here so when the fun in main function will be started to execute at the time when it will start to execute at the time when the func2 will be called at the time heap execution will be stopped and the function will tell him that wait some time wait for some times let me bring the value from me at the time and i will pass my value to you at the time and then you can execute okay so at the time the function will go to the function 1 uh, so function 2 will start to execute and it will get a value of p and it will get an value of q which is another variable which is function 1 so at the time func1 will be called back so func1 will come and it will tell to the func2 that okay let rest take some rest right now let me go and bring the values from mine which i have which they have defined in inside of me and then i will pass the value then you can start to execute okay so this is the basic structure of an c programming language okay uh c uh, code execution okay so what will happen so for now no i don't need this okay so i will simply and i want to bring this here 
okay and i want to bring this also here because i have to write something there so what will happen first first it will create another uh take some space here when the mem main memory main uh, function will be called what will happen here when our main function will be called this is our main function now this is our main function have been called when our main function have been called at that time there you have seen that we have our func2 has been called so what will it do it will simply say to this main func will simply tell this main function that wait let me go and i will print the value for you then you can start to execute so then func2 will go to start execution so what will happen then at the time func2 is starting to execute and as you have seen that when func2 has been started to execute at the time there func2 will get another function which is func1 so when func2 func1 will be called back at the time func1 will come and tell to uh, func2 to wait for some time and it will start to execute and it will bring the value for him and i will give you the value then you can start to execute so now our func1 has to come so let's bring our func1 so now our func1 has been come here so now as you can see that when our func1 has been, when first our main function has been called at the time what is happening here so basically this is known as uh, stack trim or activation record inside the stack portion of our ram the code basically uh, so when the function is called at the time it starts to stack him okay so then uh, when our main function will be called then it will call back the func2 function when func2 function will start to execute and it will create its own function it will create its own stack frame or you can stay, say it uh, activation record also and then it will uh, call back the func1 function and func1 will come and it will create its own uh, function it will create its own um, stack frame okay now what will happen so when our func1 has been come now our func1 has been come and it has been uh, successfully executed the code so um, let's see here that a we have initialized a b c d e f and what are we doing here so we have declared the value of a uh we have declared the value of b also and then we have started some mathematical operations here so c d e we have defined that and then we have defined that f is basically c into b plus e and then we are returning f so when func1 will be executed at the time it will return f and this f will come to this uh func2 and when this func2 will come and uh, func1 value will be put it there and then it will start to execute again and when this uh, value we have come here then int r will be started to execute which will be p by q and then we have written the value of r okay so in the main function it will return the value of r and then inside the main function the uh, inside of our m variable the func whose value will be printed okay so let's see once so as you can see uh, the answer is 201 so if you want to check by step by step then you can also check it step by step i will provide the raplet raplet link of this code which and i will share the source code with you via raplet so inside the description box i will share the link you can check that out there okay so now let's suppose that our func1 has been uh, here func1 is returning our f so what will happen when func1 will, will return his value f at that time it will go this will go okay this will go now so func1 is has gone so now we have func2 so when func2 will take the value of func1 
at the time it will start to execute again that means it execution will be resume and when it will execution will be completed at that time it will also remove from the stack so our func2 will also go back from here so func2 will also back now we have our main function so when our func so main function will take the value of func2 at the time it will start its uh, execution uh, that means it will resume its execution at the time the value final value will come and it will also gone so that means when basically our key programs uh, or have, has been started to execute and it will complete the execution at that time what happens at that time it happens that uh, uh, it will return the uh, ram empty okay this happens and now what is heap so as i think you have already learned about pack so what is heap right now so in c programming language uh, we have and pointer basically so okay so i want to write something here so let me write this is p p uh, i have not written like this so maybe this uh, cause some problem but i will provide the links in pdf with you guys so this is showing disgusting so i have to just simply remove it and i want to bring this okay and i will just type here that is easier for me so we have ptl for uh we have ptl which is basically our pointer and what is that we want to we want uh let's suppose we are wanting to create an array of four integer dynamically so the basically heap memory is used to store any data dynamically so now what is basically dynamically so let me show you first so what will happen i want to create an array here okay so let me create one so when we will create this array which will take four integers uh, what will happen this is taking let's suppose four integers okay so at that time when this will take this as input this pointer with this with the help of this pointer with the help of this pointer we can access the so this is the main function main work of our pointer okay so this is yeah uh, how we use this pointer okay so pointer is another function defined there to allocate dynamic memory so in our c programming tutorial series i will definitely teach you that what is pointer so uh, don't forget to follow that now i want to uh, give you a quick syntax for this uh, pointer something so i want to uh, write an function for pointer that how we can uh, use this so uh, let me write comment out that pointer so how we can use the pointer so we have to define an integer which is pointer and we will use semicolon as you know then we have to define pointer so pointer will be nothing but it will take an int star and as you can see that this is suggesting me perfectly but what is going on okay so in star in star and then we have a to use an malloc function so malloc function we will use and we will use the size of an integer and we have to close this as you know 
and then we have to terminate this using semicolon. So basically, this malloc function is used. What's the wrong with this? Okay, sorry. Uh, how much I have not defined that? So I want four integer. So this. This is still swing error. But why? What's the wrong with you? Go. Let me see. So basically, this is not calling any function here. Okay. So we have not defined that. So this is basically the syntax of an. Uh, pointer in C. Okay, so let me pointer in C. And now I want to show you that how we can use this uh, a C++ pointer in C++. I want to make this comment totally. Now basically inside of our C++ we have to make the same in PTA. We have to initialize this and then what will you do we will simply call a new function okay so basically a new function a new operator will be called new int and then we have to sorry four basically this is the uh, syntax of a n pointer in c plus plus programming language so I will also teach you this also. So don't uh, yeah, if you have not uh, no if you don't know this, so don't worry. I will teach you. Uh, you can follow. You have to just simply follow this uh, tutorial list. I will provide this inside of the description box and also in the i button too. Okay. So uh, using this pointer function, we can access this uh, heat memory. Okay. I think you have got the point. Okay, so now why we need to request a dynamic memory? Okay, let me show you. Uh, say first that oh, I want to give you an uh, example. Suppose uh, uh, you have um, ten rupees. Let's suppose you have ten rupees, but you want to buy a uh, pin which is worth of twenty rupees. You don't have uh, twenty rupees right now. So what will you do? You will simply lend 10 rupees from your friend. This is what we are doing here. Here we are doing this using the pointer function. Using this pointer, we are accessing the we are lending basically we are lending this heat memory. This is just simply lending. Okay. So what is the benefit of this lending? Okay. So we can access the we can access the using our stack also we can also access we can also create these four integers uh, array inside of our stack also but what if that we have and let's suppose 2 to the power 10 numbers uh, integers inside of an array at that time if we uh, uh, want to insert this inside of our stack memory it will basically stay until we call back the function that means until the code will not call back function will be not called back at that time till the time the array will be there but if you don't need that then at that time that time we have to use this dynamic memory allocation system which is our heap memory we have to use this pointer function so here what we are doing we can use this uh, heap memory to store any data store any data and here inside of this what will happen we can uh, use these uh, whenever we want and we also can delete these also after when we don't need this we can simply tell the heap that we don't need this right now to so delete this this is too simple okay that means our code will not be so complicated and it will not take some uh, too much memory also okay and it will be fast and it will be efficient also 
this is why uh, we have to use this tip so i think you have got the point i will share the link i, I have written all things uh, for you guys so you can simply access this and uh one more thing i want to say that uh i have already started too much playlist uh basically i have already started front end projects front end development uh, tutorial series basically that is uh html series of javascript tutorial series and i have also started c programming tutorial series and i have also started and programming uh competitive programming series also so basically i will recommend you to view all the video uh, simultaneously together that means i will uh, share uh, let's suppose i will share maximum two videos per day maximum two videos maximum day i will share only one video okay this is why because i have learned like this that i have learned today uh, i have learned by doing this that i have one sided i have learned front end development one side i have learned back end development and at the same time i have learned on both the data system algorithms so this is why i am also telling you and i am suggesting you that when i will take a new video you will get the notification when you will subscribe my channel so if you have not done the subscribe uh, hit the subscribe button yet then please subscribe my channel so uh, what will you do uh, i will post a sequence i will post a video in sequence and like that uh, when you are trying to learn something new you i know that you have limited times in a day i have a limited time also if it is 24 hours inside of this 24 hours i have to sleep we have to eat we have to we have some entertainment we have some other works also so our study time is totally minimum let's suppose this minimum so how we can use this minimum time and how we can get a uh, maximum output so this is how we can do we have to learn the all things simultaneously okay so i will post uh, uh, let's suppose we have now uh, three topics one is this uh, front end projects one is this data structure algorithm and one is no and the four topics one is c programming tutorial and one is uh, front end development tutorial also i have so i will share these like a sequence you can follow them and every day i will try that when i will make two videos each day at the time you will get a competitive programming uh, solution okay so this is for today so hope you guys have learned uh, uh, if uh, you have uh, if you if this video uh, has provided you something value then please subscribe this channel because i have committed to you that i will make you job ready and i will make myself also job ready because i made two videos to clear my concept and i want to i belong from west bengal india okay and i am a bengali so bengal is my native language and english is not my native language so this is why i am using english only i am not using hindi it is why because i want to fluent my english skills okay so maybe i am telling something wrong but uh, i am that means i am telling something wrong in english but i want to uh, uh, modify myself also so i think we can do it together so if you want to learn together then please subscribe this channel and hit the like button and leave a beautiful comment for me that what can i do for you and what types of videos you want, uh, what types of front end projects you want. So, I will try to bring that type of video. And today, what we have learned, I will share all the uh, source with you guys in the description box. So, please do check. So, I will see you in the next video. That means the next day, tomorrow. So, till then, stay safe and happy coding.